quite a name for himself. And that's why they call Kevin Nairo the beast. And it's over! He could have retired wherever he wanted. If you had asked me if you'd come back here someday, I'll say no way. But he did. <laughs> well, mate, we set, set the emotions it. aside now. You've got to start focusing in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. 90% of our population oh, well, don't live in the Cook Islands. Cook Islanders like to spread their wings and try things, and, you know, hopefully a lot of them do return at some point. People say, what do you want to be remembered by? What did you do to help the world? Well, be an islander in none other than Rarotonga. Coach his son's team. Two. Raise a family. <laughs> Come on, guys. That is special enough. But there's more. I think he started to hear the ancestors waking from their graves, shaking the grounds that we were on. All the way down to the ocean floor. Can you imagine our ancestors when they came across the ocean, you know, miles and miles in, and all of a sudden seeing a little dot, how you'd see these peaks as you got closer, volcanic peaks, and you'd be wondering to yourself, is anyone there yet, or are we the first guys there? Would have been so awesome, eh? Because that's what our ancestors did. Sailed these oceans and settled all the islands in the Pacific. How long ago? Over a thousand years ago. And they would have had such resilience, never give up. And so that's why we are like we are today as Cook Islanders. But back in the day, when I was your age, you could virtually spear fish just at the edge there. Because there'd be just <laughs> heaps of fish just swimming around. You wouldn't worry about the small ones. When I used to go out fishing, put tuna in there. Oh my goodness, just so many fish. It's unbelievable and you see dolphins and everything jumping around and the coral was all alive. Just blues, greens, yellows, just so many colours. What happened? Why did all the coral die? Things change. The waves started getting into the ocean. The reefs started disappearing. Those fish stopped biting all caught by the big outfits from other countries. Now, sometimes you can go out for days and days and not catch anything. And our people, we were living to seek out opportunities and leasing our lands to foreigners. Our people see boats at night. Right now, Resources are being uh, extracted from our waters. Even when I came back, I never thought about the deep ocean. I was concerned about the, the lagoons. But as I researched and read more, I yeah, thought to myself, well, right. you know, our oceans actually, yeah. that is the lifeblood. Yeah. You know, and yeah. our ancestors sailed those yeah. oceans, and they have so much of a great understanding of mm. what the ocean meant. Mm. And now it's just it's just blue because we're so focused on you know our lambs because it's so valuable and so scarce. That's it. <laughs> we have always taken for granted that the waters is okay. Uh, that's our water. That's our ocean. But everything is not heavenly paradise out there. Yeah. You know it's not. And uh, we've got to do something about it. I think the fish is a bit shy this morning. <laughs> they saw the cameras coming. <laughs> we see the whole ocean that our forefathers sat and, and navigated as, you know, sacred. So if we can, all as Cook Islanders, think about protecting all of the ocean and not just locking off certain areas, not just our lagoons, not just all that we can see, but everything that's out there, I think we're going to be better off than 
than most other places. Cameron pushed the idea of an enormous marine park, an area the size of Mexico. That's Marae Moai, our sacred ocean. I said, come on, Kevin, you can't be serious. I don't know if you have met Kevin before, but this man get that serious look into his eyes. That's that's the beast. Maybe at rugby that he's been playing knocked him a good one. And again, I lost away now. And I know this time will take Gary Spencer on. Because then oh, just absolutely it started to happen. And Kevin Idol's decided he wants to play football now. It's taken, uh, I mean, 67 minutes I, I can't Minnesota, even forget this. The no, Uyeniki kept saying, he's a rugby player. <laughs> How, what is it that he knows about our, our, our ocean? <laughs> Science tells us that we probably only know of 10% of you know, all ocean creatures. Uh, with our particular ocean in Marae Moana, we have some very deep waters up to six kilometres deep. So there could be species down there, ecosystems you know, that we've never seen before, and we need to find out ourselves what is out there. Kevin got the local people in his corner. You know my biggest fear, the traditional leaders, if we don't do anything about it, uh, will be gradually be pushed aside and um, companies will be coming in, the government will be coming in, uh, transforming the EEZ into the Marae I think it's a good idea to keep all the commercial fishing boats out, away. And if they can do it before I dive, I'll be happy, you know? The more you got our people to be involved, the more they realise that he is genuine. He got the Prime Minister in his corner, Henry Puna. Just after I was sworn in as Prime Minister, Kevin Iro came to see me. With this idea, which I thought was crazy at the time, of having a whole EEZ of nearly 2 million square kilometres declared as a marine protected area. And the more we talked about it, the more I liked it. When I took the legislation to Parliament, distinguished representatives, there was not a single opposition to the legislation. Caring for the ocean and its resources as not just our moral duty, we also see it as our obligation under international law. Marae Moana finally happened in 2017. It prohibits commercial fishing and mining. Within 15 nautical miles of each of our 15 islands, one of the most significant uh, achievements in all of the Pacific. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful example for the world. Without Henry, none of this will happen. Total commitment. But without the beast, none of this will happen either. You look around now, you hardly see lights at night. Thank to you. Thank to you, Kevin. It's not finished, you know? It's not finished. Hopefully by the time we're not <laughs> around, around, you know, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren yeah, yeah. know so much about so the ocean, just like our ancestors. Exactly. That we're one with the ocean again, right? Yeah. You know, it might have taken nearly a decade. It's Cook Island history now. My grandchildren learn about the Marae Moana Act passed in 2017 in their school. The boat stopped coming How about in with all that? the food. How would we live? And someday there will be ancient history. Of the land and of the ocean. Just because you're from a, this tiny little island doesn't mean that you can't achieve you know, your, your ultimate uh, dream. It doesn't take a scientific expert to make something like this happen. It takes a heart of gold. As long as you put the hard work in, dedicate yourself, it can be done, eh? And that's for anything. That doesn't, not necessarily for rugby or anything else, it's, it's for anything in life. All this, you know, some say this is a creation of the universe of proportion. Or the gods of your choosing. Yet in a way, it's a creation of one man, flesh and blood, who lives on this earth today. And the same is true of all the sacred places of the world. It all depends on how you look at it. For our 
Outstanding Island Environmental Achievement, the 2022 Psychology Prize is awarded to Kevin Hero from the Cook Islands.